Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Haynes, does the IRS have any position on whether additional campaign finance legislation should be passed by Congress? Senator, I don't have an official position on that matter. Uh, I, leave, I leave those decisions up to our criminal tax council and the or our tax council and the uh, Department of Treasury to establish those types of regulations or improvements. Thank, thank you. Uh, Ms. Rahman, I'd, I'd like to go back to, to the conversation we were having uh, a, a few minutes ago uh, and, and to understand as best I can the Department's position with regard to the constitutional protections on independent expenditures by private citizens. Uh, as I understood our discussion, uh, the, the, the principal basis you were pointing to additional disclosure requirements on private political activity is that that transparency would aid in discovering if there is corruption or bribery. Is, is that, am I understanding you correctly? Corruption and bribery and if there are other violations of our campaign contribution limits. Um, now, you, now you would certainly agree that, that there are limits and I would think significant limits to the theory that additional government information would be helpful for discovering crime. Uh, that, 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 that that's a theory that has the potential to require government disclosure of, of, of virtually everything and I, I'm sure you would agree there are limits to that theory. Of, of course, and we obviously just want a reasonable disclosure regime that balances the need for people to um, speak freely and, and have their voices heard in the political uh, arena while still assuring us that we are able to combat bo both corruption and the appearance of corruption. Now, when I asked about a constitutional right to anonymous speech, uh, you made reference to Supreme Court decisions. Uh, does the Department of Justice maintain that the Supreme Court has been wrong in concluding that there is a, a First Amendment right to anonymous speech? It is not the government's position to second guess the, the Supreme Court. I am here, however, to clearly describe what some of our challenges are in light of Citizens United. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the government took a particular position before the Supreme Court in Citizens United, but now we have a law and uh, we intend to follow right. it. Um, that having been said, there are real challenges. There are real challenges to our ability to uh, enforce the contra campaign contribution laws, and there are real challenges to our ability to determine when and whether there is the type of corruption that is rooted in campaign contributions in exchange for official acts. Well, and, and I think everyone on, on both sides of the aisle would, would agree that, that preventing corruption and preventing bribery is, is an important governmental interest and, and, and deserves serious focus. Uh, and you mentioned, though, in your prepared testimony that, that you were concerned also not just about corruption and bribery, but, but what you characterized as undue influence. And um, I guess I have a little bit of difficulty understanding what undue influence means. Because if it's not corruption or bribery, which is a very different thing, it, it strikes me that the citizens are due all the influence they can get in, in a democratic process. Uh, so so I'd, I'm curious what, what you mean by undue influence, if, if it's any different from corruption or, or, or bribery. I don't think I intend to suggest that it's something different from illegal acts such as corruption or bribery or extortion by, uh, by officials. Um, what it does, what it is that it, I am focusing, however, on the fact that undue influence often translates into those kinds of activities. I think it's axiomatic that contributions uh, lead to influence, and the larger the contribution, the larger the influence. And we have seen in certain of our corruption cases that public officials um, succumb to that influence and uh, agree to take official acts in exchange for campaign contributions. And we just want to be vigilant about ensuring that we can get to the heart of those kinds of cases when and if we encounter them. Uh, well, but the Supreme Court has certainly recognized the distinction between contributions and independent expenditures. And, and there are a great many organizations on, on the left and on the right that, that devote real resources to trying to convince their fellow citizens that they're right on particular issues of public importance. Um, I, I assume it is not, for example, the Department of Justice's position that a group like the Sierra Club 
exercises undue influence. Am I, am I right in that? And again, Senator Cruz, I want to be absolutely clear. The, my concern is about not about any one particular group or about undue influence in and of itself. What I am concerned about is that um, given the rise of super PACs, our ability to understand when there is the type of coordination that causes an expenditure to become a contribution and that kind of contribution is over the uh, contribution limits that have long been established by Congress, that we want to be able to get to that, get to the bottom of that. So, so, so is it right then that to get to the bottom of it that the department would like to know every political contribution made to every private group? Is there, I, I don't, I, again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I'm trying to understand what, you, what your testimony is. There are two things that would aid us as prosecutors. Greater transparency in general, and we are happy to work with Congress or your staffs to talk further about the particulars. Number two, um, a more common sense understanding and definition about what constitutes coordination. And um, those two things would assist us as prosecutors in being able to continue to do the jobs that we've always done in terms of rooting out corruption. You know, we've seen in recent news reports instances of bribery and corruption of public officials receiving bribes. I think one, it was alleged, received a bribe in a, in a box of Cheerios. Uh, another public official recently was alleged to have kept a bribe in his freezer. Uh, so corruption is a real problem, but I think it is qualitatively different from regulating the efforts of private citizens to speak out in the political process. And I'll make clear at least my views. Uh, I asked about the Sierra Club, and, and I can happily say, no, I don't think they exercise undue influence. I don't think Planned Parenthood ex exercises undue influence. I don't think the unions exercise undue influence. I don't think the NRA exercises undue influence. I think every one of them has a constitutional right to speak out in our democracy. I think their members care passionately about the values they are espousing, and that's the way our system's supposed to work. And I think we should be very cautious about the federal government restricting the ability of private citizens to express their views on, on the direction of our country. Thank you. If I might.